A man with a gun is a fool. And a kid with a gun is riding a fast train to full city. We had a Valentine's Day ice skating and no one w- wanted to go because someone got shot in the ice skating ring. I feel scared. People with guns, they're trying to shoot other people. It makes them feel like they're like a big person, but it makes them look like a fool. I've been shot. I got shot in 2000. Um, nearly lost my life. And I've shot people as well. Here's a question no one asks. Why teenage black boys keep shooting each other in Lambeth? It's a fact. The last deaths by guns in Lambeth. One kid was black, another mixed race, Asian and white. All bases covered. Gun crime is down to people, not skin. There are a quarter of a million people in Lambeth, from the blink of a London eye, past St. Thomas's Hospital, past Brixton Academy. 132 languages spoken every day. The project we're running right now is a living newspaper project. The young people were asked to take newspaper articles and find headlines that they thought were really speaking about issues that were important to them. We were just going through the newspapers and stuff. We saw that pretty much every day of the week there was something to do with gun crime and the use on the street. One cannot open a newspaper or watch TV without being reminded of the deterioration of the youth culture in our society. Every week, a new story, such as those dealing with gun and gang culture amongst teenagers in South London. There are so many shows that are written for young people, but they're not really giving young people their voice. They're written from an adult's perspective. So this was a chance for them to take information that was important for them and present it to adults and say, listen to us, this is what we think, not what you think we think. Although only a small minority of the young population are carrying harmful weapons on their person, a huge uprising has occurred in the number of people getting stopped and searched. We feel this is a huge infringement on our personal privacy. We understand the reason that this is an attempt to lessen incidents and fatal attacks, but it seems perhaps the government is focusing on the wrong thing, young people's physical actions rather than the mentality behind it. The younger generation are starting to feel like they need to show that they're big because the older generation, say from 20 onwards, they're not really with this, how the young people would someone barge them and then they shoot them for no reason. King's College in London found that there were 3,600 handguns used in offences in the last year, compared to 2,600 in 1999, a 40% increase. I was sitting in my friend's house, like, and it's like, we're just chilling, and then the door knocks. Before you know it, yeah, some guy runs up, like, in the house, goes like that, <laughs> takes the Mac-10 out, does that, the bulletproof vest on, do you know what I'm trying to say? So it's like, that was like, to me, that was a shock. But it's like, do you know what I'm trying to say? Little things like it's mad, but it's the life we live in. Yes, I've had young people that I've worked with, right, that have been involved in terms of the word shotting, where they've been selling drugs. They've been out there making lots of money. They have been flossing at the level where they go and everybody knows them at the clubs, knows them on the roads. All the women know them, so obviously, right, that kind of bravado is something, right, that they're, they're quite like. But I've been able to turn and be able to stem and pull them away by working closely with them, by taking them to places with me in the evenings and weekends, and actually turn and show them the opportunities of qualifications to turn and get them employable so they don't become a prison statistic with long-term prison sentences or get caught up in the mix that eventually, right, they've in reprisals because other young people know they're making a lot of money are going to take them out. The near my project in Streatham is a drug and alcohol rehab centre where some of the men have done time for gun crime. My mum knew that was part of a gang, but other people didn't know. You know, people don't, they, they were scared of us really. It was a fear thing. As the children start to uh, grow up and they become acclimated to gangs and they become acclimated to looking for respect and they start to think they can get respect from uh, the, the guns and the gangs. Anybody with a gun is going to think they're powerful, but for me, you're not powerful with a gun. It's just going to get you in the grave or doing 25 to life. My, my domain is my cell. Um, this is where I sleep. This is where my cellmate sleep, Davin. This is where I 
sit and do all my writing. This is where all memorabilia of my family is. Um, my bathroom comes into here and where I can wash. Just come this way. My washroom, toilet, big clothes basket. I can show you here, look. I've got a great view at, my, at myself. This is home for the, for the meantime. Just for the meantime. One day I'll be home. I got shot in 2000. Um, nearly lost my life. And I've shot people as well. I was walking down the street late at night. And a boy with a hoodie walked up. Shot me. I didn't go down on the floor or anything. And he just ran off. I had my spleen removed. <clears throat> 38 stitches. It's a life changing experience, like, you know. Sorry to Lovely man, it's lovely, the light of my world. I'd show him these, these tapes and these videos of me inside this place and make him know exactly what it's like, you know, the true ins and outs of it. It's not a good place to be. Down in Cold Harbour Lane, um, a young man got shot um, opposite the Green Man under the bridge and it was, that was really, really horrifying um, in terms of, I think, the young people. It was, a lot of, it, it was probably the first time a lot of them have actually been so close and seen a gun victim. The odd occasion when you actually accept that you're human uh, is when you've been trying to resuscitate this. I keep going back to the fact that they're young because most of these victims are very young and they're getting younger. And you're watching this person sort of go down in spite of all your desperate attempts. And an occasion or two, it's crossed my mind that I have a son. He was laying there, um, the crowd was excited, and, you know, I could see that he was dying when I turned him over because the blood just came gushing out. Unfortunately, with this sort of injuries, basic life support doesn't do it. Now, injury almost invariably leads to damage to organ and a lot of blood loss. That's not a lot that they can do to help that person. I just comforted him really, because um, I knew it was his last moments. And but before the police came, I just left because there was nothing more I could do. There was nothing anybody could do. And then you, you take a minute or two, particularly when you're winding down, when you've come to accept that whatever you did wasn't going to make any difference anymore. Uh, you will need a time out to have a cup of coffee and take it in and, and reorganize yourself before you go and break the news to the relatives.